Hey, so my name is Brian, and I get asked all the time for tips and tricks on how to do real estate photography. So I wanted to go through really quickly and show you what my process is. So um, I use um, a plugin for Lightroom called Infuse, and that is how I merge multiple exposures. So if you've gotten this far, I'm going to assume at least that you know what um, HDR photography is. And I would highly recommend that you go and download the Infuse plugin before you get started. Um, it costs a couple bucks. I think it's like a pay what you can or what you want. I think I, you know, at the time paid, um, I don't know, 10 bucks or something for it. Um, so anyway, go download the Infuse plugin and then come back and get started. So, um, so the first step obviously is to um, import everything into your Lightroom catalog. All right, so here I've got everything imported in my Lightroom catalog. I don't have any special folders um, set up. Um, so usually the first thing that I like to do is get everything organized. Um, so what I want to do right now is actually just create a collection where all of my HDR photos are going to go so that it's there. And that one is not HDR, so I don't want that there. So I'm going to delete that, go back to all of my photographs. Um, so the very first thing that I need to do is apply some standard um, so a, a standard preset, uh, basically to uh, a pre-developed preset. Um, so I've got a couple of those set up here, and I highly recommend that you, um, at some point, get yourself fam familiar with um, Lightroom presets and how to, you know, either create or or import um, your own presets so that uh, you can jump right in and get started. All right, so I've got a couple over here. I've got real estate um, plugins. I've got um, some Infuse presets, so right here. I'm gonna go to one that's a, uh, a medium exposure just to make sure that everything looks kosher. Um, so um, first things first, so I've got this applied. Um, I can go through and, and look at a couple of the different, um, couple of the, whoa couple of the different pre-developed presets. That one's super orange. And that one looks just about right. Maybe it's a little bit on the cool side, so I'm gonna I'm gonna kick this temperature slider up just a little bit. Um, if I wanted to to try to white balance to something in the room, I would hit the W key and then find something white in the room. This is probably gonna make it pretty blue. Yep. Um, but I can see that it also kicked up my magenta values. Um, which is probably good. So I'm gonna pull this white balance up just a little. I do like the magenta value. Usually I find the interior stuff that also includes um, um, some exterior, like outside of windows, um, along with incandescent lighting, like this, where it's you know standard light bulbs, usually is gonna be in the 42 to 4400 range for white balance for something that looks pretty good. I'm not gonna fuss over too much. That looks pretty good to me. Um, so just a really quick, um, a really quick look at my preset here. Basically, what I want to do is increase the dynamic range, so decrease the contrast um, of the photo um, before it gets merged into an HDR as much as possible. So look here, and you've got your highlights are all the way down to 100, shadows are all the way up to 100, <clears throat> contrast down just a little. I want to leave my exposure flat because I've got five different exposures in this particular set of, of photos. And I've got my clarity up just a little bit that's gonna um, create some additional definition in the merged photo. Um, now, if for some reason I wanted to mess with these, like if I, you know, if I really wanted things to pop, like the white areas to pop, you can see how as I, I bring the, um, the tone curve up, you can see it pop like around the, uh, around the white here. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and leave this just touched up a little bit. Um, <clears throat> one thing that I do sometimes also is bring down the blue, the bring down the blue luminance values, um, and also the green luminance values. If there is blue sky outside the window, for example, um, that's going to make the blue a little more prominent, um, and it's going to reduce the likelihood that it's going to look blown out in the photo outside the window. I could also uh, bring the luminance down in the green outside the window. You can see it changing there. Um, I'm going to bring it down just a little. I definitely want my saturation values to be pretty close to zeroed out. So I'm going to go ahead and just zero all of these out because I don't want any weird uh, sat saturation issues. Um, I'm going to try to move through this the rest of this process pretty quickly so you can get the feel for it. 
All right, so everything there is zeroed out. I definitely don't want any split toning because this is real estate photography. I do want to sharpen it a little bit. As you can see, there's some noise there, so I might add just a little, little bit of noise reduction. Um, I tend to like my real estate photos pretty sharp, but I don't want them to look like, you know, um, like an exacto knife. Um, I definitely want to uh, enable profile correction um, because I use a nice wide lens, so that's going to make sure that all of my edges are um, you know, uh, I've reduced and minimized the amount of curvature that's showing up in my image if I've added the correction. So you can see there, there's more, more curvature, the lines look a lot less straight. So, okay. All right. So it reduces the amount of vignetting, etc. I definitely don't want to add any kind of vignette or anything like that. Um, all right. So this is my interior preset and I've got a slightly different, um, I'm going to need a slightly different developing approach when I do both bathrooms, um, usually because there's definitely not going to be a, a window in 95% of interior bathrooms, you know, sometimes in the master bathroom you'll have a, a decent sized window, but so uh, the first thing that I want to do is Command C, I'm going to copy, I'm going to copy the developing values here. I uh, usually don't want to copy across the cropping or anything like that across a whole batch of photos. Um, so. I'm just going to go ahead and select everything, Command A, and right click and go Develop Settings, Paste Settings. All right. So that's I've just thrown a blanket over the entire um, over the entire batch of photos. Uh, some of them are going to need white balance adjusting, and that's probably just about it. Um, so I don't want to make too many adjustments. I want my batch basically to be consistently developed across the board. This is just my pre-developed setting. All right, so. Um, I'm going to go and do some spot checks here, make sure that there's no weirdness. So mostly I'm going to check my bathrooms, and in this case I, I remember actually doing, um, doing the bathroom a couple of times with a couple of different white balances, so um, let's check, let's spot check this bathroom here. This definitely is a little, little on the orange side, so I'm going to probably drop the white balance down on this um, to 3600, or maybe even 3200. Let's just see. Um, let's go all the way down to 32. That looks pretty close. It actually looks a little bit on the magenta side. So I can see that this magenta is definitely playing. So I'm going to hit W um, for white balance. And this is going to look real blue. So I'm going to warm this back up to, let's bring this back up to like 32. It's going to be a little warm. It definitely still looks a little on the pink side, but now I'm just going to go with that. Okay, so Command C. I want to copy this across, and then I definitely want to select all of the photos that are in this range, holding the Shift key and going to the last photo in the series of bathroom photos, develop settings, paste. And I'm going to go across the board and just make sure that there aren't any other weird ones. And I'm going to pay special attention once I get there to um, to exterior photos. Definitely going to want to make sure that my exterior photos are developed for, um, you know, uh, daylight balance. Because um, as it is, they're probably going to look a little blue. Now this particular series of photos I actually shot um, on a rainy day, unfortunately. <laughs> I live in Seattle where rain is kind of inevitable sometimes and and you can't always choose a sunny day to shoot a listing that's kind of urgent which it was today oh there's another set of bathrooms because i went back and shot with the curtain closed so i'm gonna select those and paste the develop settings again and that's gonna fix the white balance and away we go so one other thing I want to mention real quick, because um, obviously this is only covering post-production, but the way that you shoot real estate photos really matters. The angles that you choose really matter. Um, people often show me uh, their real estate photos, and I think the biggest thing that I notice is that most people don't really understand um, how to compose a real estate photo. Um, so, and I'm not saying that I'm perfect, but I definitely have developed some techniques over the years. Um, one thing that I do is I often space my camera about midway between the ceiling and the floor. So that might mean having my tripod head 
um, sometimes about three and a half, four feet high, um, which means I'm not actually fully standing up. What this does is it makes the floor uh, makes the floor space look as prevalent as the ceiling space. One thing that I notice in a lot of real estate photographers' photos is they're far too close to the ceiling, and you see more ceiling than floor. Well, you know, usually you want to you want to show the floor space, not the ceiling. So um, sometimes, if I'm in a small room, especially, I'm going to actually duck down and bring my tripod down even lower. You can see here, I'm just barely at the level of the mirror here. So I was about three and a half feet. In part, I wanted to show the, the counters here and the, um, you know, and the cabinetry, the tiles a little bit. Uh, the other thing about composing real estate photos is to always make sure that your camera is level with, um, with the ground. It's parallel completely, um, which means not tilting it up or tilting it down. What this does is this enables your vertical and your, your horizontal lines that are in the plane of the camera to be um, parallel to the edges of the frame. Um, this just creates a really nice clean look and I find that it's um, time after time, um, you know, I've tried going in and shooting, looking down into, uh, into a bathroom, for example, to try to get the floor. What it does is you end up getting curved lines, especially, um, especially when, you're, when you're pointing a, a really wide lens down or up. Sometimes it's unavoidable if you're shooting a house on a hill, you really have to tilt the camera up in order to get the, the, the house in the frame. But for the most part, I always want to have my camera completely level to the ground. Um, and, um, and I usually will choose one corner of a room and edge myself into the corner. So like if you look here, you see I have uh, found myself a little nook right here in the corner and I want to lead with this, with this corner. and. I may crop this in order to get this corner right to the edge of the frame, and then you can see all of my other all of my other lines are parallel. Um, this one I shot a little wide, and you can see I, I definitely want to crop this out, and I definitely want to draw this down. So I'm going to hit R on my keyboard, which is my shortcut for my crop tool, and just to show you really quick, and I'm going to hold the shift key and then pull that down. Okay, that's good. And now I also want to do 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 cut that guy off a little. Now the other thing I notice also is that it's ever so slightly wider at the bottom. So I'm actually going to tilt this just a hair. And just, just the tiniest bit because I want my angles to be perfect. And double click and that commits it. Um, so now you can see that angle looks a lot nicer than the first one. Undo, before and after, takes a minute. Um, I'm going to R and then just reset the crop. Because <clears throat> I don't really want to crop these at this stage. I'll crop them in, uh, you know, once once the final um, merged versions have come out. So anyway, all right. So here we are, and I'm going to the exterior. What a nasty, rainy day. Um, today it was really gross. This was a house out in the middle of the woods. Um, not, a, not an extraordinarily beautiful outside shot today um, in the middle of January in the Northwest, but you can see how I've got this all framed up on the edge here. It's got a nice tight crop, and um, so that's that's going to be really important. Like on this shot here, I'm probably also going to want to um, crop this. Going to want to pull this tighter to the bottom of the frame and to the railing. <clears throat> right about like that. And that was what I had in mind when I shot this, but I always like to, to give myself a little bit of um, a little bit of leeway. So you can see I'm cropping this right to the edge of that frame and right to the edge of this frame. And that's just going to create a much nicer composition with good leading lines, etc. Um, so this gives me a good feel for the layout of the deck. Um, I can imagine myself out here, you know, having a party in the summertime, enjoying company with friends, you know, on the deck in the summer. Um, having a barbecue or whatever. Um, so anyway, again, I'm going to undo that for now. And um, I do notice that this white balance is not quite right. So I want to come up here and I'm just going to manually enter 5600 for daylight. And, you know, that's a little bit warm. Um, and I'm going to pull this magenta value down just a little bit. Um, it does look a little bit warm, but I'm going to roll with it because um, 
that's just going to be my standard for exteriors. Um, exteriors are pretty reliably going to look the best around 5600. So I'm just going to do that, and, uh, and for the sake of time, I'm just going to go ahead and paste this value all the way across here. Didn't change anything else about it. Right click, um, develop settings, paste settings. All right. The next thing to do with the Infuse plugin, um, and this is where things get a little tricky if you've never used the plugin. I've got a pretty good workflow set up for this. So the next thing we need to do is actually tell the computer which files to um, to look at when it's when it's actually combining to create the HDR, right? I don't want to have to manually one by one go through all of these files, all of these sets of of compositions, and you know, 28 or 30 or however many sets there are in here and actually, uh, you know, tell it to merge these five and then these five. I've, I want this computer to do as much as There is this really cool feature in Lightroom that enables you to, to sort photos based on how long, how long it took before you took the next series of photos. Um, it's called stacking. And if that wasn't super clear, um, just watch and watch and learn. So if I select all of my photos here, Command A. I'm actually going to go back up to the library menu. It's just going to make this process faster. If I'm only doing sorting stuff, the library menu is always faster um, interacting with photos than the develop menu. <clears throat> so if you're not actively developing, I always recommend working in the library menu. Um, the computer sort of switches gears and processing wise stuff happens way faster if you're not actually adjusting those exposure values and other things. You can do quick adjustments here. Um, if you select an entire batch of photos you can actually make global adjustments here. Um, if I wanted to I could also um, add some metadata here. Um, so um, I can do that. I'm not going to worry too much about metadata because these photos are going to live on the MLS for a couple of days and then the house will sell. Um, I don't care too much about copyright on these, but if I wanted to, I could go ahead and add metadata. <clears throat> All right, so back to this stacking idea. Um, this is this is the, the trick that's going to make this whole process so much easier for you. So I'm going to go to stacking, and you can go group into stack, so I can manually stack these into groups of photos based on uh, based on you know my pre-selection of, of photos so I could choose five and go group into a stack and then there there's a stack and they basically uh, they basically are sorted automatically um, I'm sorry they're sorted manually but they're sorted into a pile um, through Lightroom automatically so I can like select these four and go group into a stack and now you'll only see the top one and there's a little icon on the top that says four. Um, I'm gonna undo that because there's a better way to do this. Unstack. All right, so I'm gonna select all, and I'm going to, oops, I'm gonna select all. I'm gonna go to stacking, and I wanna go to auto stack by capture time. Now, one thing I figured out is that 30 seconds is about the, the sweet spot for me when I'm uh, in between sets of photos or in between compositions. Um, that make sure that I don't end up getting two different compositions in one stack and I don't miss any. So I'm going to go ahead and hit stack and then I do also have to um, actually go through and, and spot check because sometimes if I you know if I do two angles within a room really quickly back to back sometimes it'll automatically stack um, you know two angles quickly. So I'm going to look for five. I'm going to look for all of my sets of five and right now, straight away, I can see here's 10 in this one. So I shot this room pretty quick. So I'm going to go to stacking, and I'm going to actually unstack this one. And I'm going to manually choose the first five and manually group into a stack. And manually choose the second five and group into a stack. The other place where I notice that it oftentimes doesn't work is bathrooms. Because um, sometimes a handheld, uh, I'll shoot handheld in the bathroom. Um, in order to get a little closer to the floor, and I'll shoot in stacks of three instead of five um, because it's hard to handhold and shoot five exposures um, without it, you know, without you jogging the camera and, and coming up with um, with unmergeable HDR files. Um, all right, so everything looks good. I'm going to go through and do this manually. Um, one thing that I would say, just um, as a as a 
a pointer. I didn't always shoot HDR, and it's not necessary. I think you can get great photos um, just shooting single exposure, but it's kind of become an expectation in, in, in real estate photography to be able to see out the windows. And um, what I've found is this Infuse plugin is really the best way to do that without giving it that cartoony look that a lot of, a lot of real estate photos have, um, where it really kind of looks surreal. Um, I mean, at least in terms of my style, um, my clients really want something that looks clean and polished, but it doesn't, you know, it shouldn't look like, um, shouldn't look like, uh, you know, something that comes out of a car, you know, a cartoon. Uh, so trying to make this as quick as possible so we can get to the infuse plugin because that's kind of where the magic happens. And looks like I was working pretty fast today because I've got several of these stacks of 10 that I know for sure are mistakenly stacked together. So maybe I could have gone back and actually chosen, um, you know, 20 seconds um, instead of 30 seconds for the auto stack by capture time. Um, but anyway, this is pretty quick to go through and just spot check. Usually there's only one or two stacks I find that um, don't automatically group together. Um, you also want to make sure if you, you know, shot a one-off, a single image of something, um, that's not an HDR photo in the same time frame as you shot a series that it doesn't accidentally get stacked because that will prevent the HDR from um, from actually merging correctly. Um, you know, like if there's something cool that's happening.